Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Office Hours with the College Success Professor Facebook Live and Podcast. Um, I have a fantastic guest with me here today. I'm so excited to talk to him um, one-on-one. I actually did see him present um, on entrepreneurship, uh, I think it was last year, um, and his talk was so fascinating, so engaging. I had to have him as one of the speakers through the College and Entrepreneurship um, Talk Today series today. So I'm so excited about having him on. I'm so you know happy. I know it's going to be a lot of knowledge and information um, shared with you, shared with us today. So get your pen, get a notebook. Be able to. I'm sure he's going to share some good knowledge, some good information, some good resources for you all who are listening, who are joining us today. So, Dave, as I mentioned before we went live, um, I usually have a guest bio, and I have the you know I read the guest bio, but I've heard you speak before, so I know you're going to have you have a. I'm sure you have something in your back pocket about how you introduce yourself, how you tell people who you are and what you do. So I'm going to let you take it away. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dave Anderson. I am the Mohawking, real talking, living fully business bully, doing what I do, snapping necks, and cashing checks. Woo! Um, <laughs> I'm excited to be here. I'm a serial entrepreneur. Uh, I love black people and I love helping my people uh, make and maximize their ideas, talents, and dreams into tangible assets and cash. So that's, uh, that's kind of what I do. I have uh, a marketing firm and a few other businesses that you know would take a whole lot to run into, so I'm not gonna get into all of that. But I will say that Phoenix is an absolute honor to be here, and I'm excited to have this conversation. Me too. Me too. Like I said, I, I've been excited to um, have you on because, like I said, um, I do follow you um, on Facebook online. I know you're on a lot of different formats, but I follow you on Facebook, um, and I'm always um, like, I'm writing down stuff like because it's good information that you share. And I appreciate the fact that you um, offer advice freely um, for people who are who have questions to ask. So I definitely appreciate that. So I thought you'd be a fantastic guest to have on the show. You're also, like you said, a serial, tro- serial entrepreneur. Go ahead. You were saying. No, absolutely. I feel like the, the one thing that I should do um, is provide info for people who don't necessarily uh, get it you know, normally. So I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here and I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be of service. It's a Definitely. nice cup. Well, you know, Hey, you got to You got a brand all day, all day, every day. Yeah. I love it. Actually, as you mentioned it, I'm having, um, the person who made this cup, because as I mentioned, I'm doing a um, series on entrepreneurship in college and the person mm-hmm. who made this cup is going to come on and she's going to be talking about, um, if you're into crafting and, you know, making your own thing. She also does crocheting how you can have that as a business, um, as a college student, because we're talking to college students about how they can make money while they're in college and also build some important skills that they'll need, you know, for life after college as well. So entrepreneurs do it, um, in a lot of different ways. So that's why I'm doing that. So can you talk about how and why I know a little bit of your backstory. So share as much or as little as you want about how Mm -hmm. and why you became an entrepreneur. Uh, Yeah, I started my career at nine years old, um, making me arguably the youngest contracted radio personality in the history of the business. And I wound up retiring at 34, 35 years of age, um, simply because I was making companies millions of dollars and I wasn't seeing a tenth of that. And I kind of got sick of having the dubious distinction of being the battery as opposed to being a machine. And once I realized that my skin, my youth, my inability to go along to get along was becoming problematic in the quest for me trying to get what I felt I rightly deserved, I said, okay, well, I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna take my ball and go home. And that's what I did. And I, I think I made a good choice. I think so too. <laughs> so could you talk a little bit about, I know you have um, a long history of entrepreneurship, um, you know, since we're our audience and we're talking about young people in entrepreneurship, could you talk about some of the businesses you started um, when you were, you know, of college age or younger? Yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest thing I did when I was in college, there's two things. First, when I got to college, the first thing I did was I read the rule book. You know, I looked at the student manual. I looked at, I mean, I read that bad book cover to cover. And I got to this very interesting uh, paragraph that talked about the fact that there are 
and, and this is in my day, so you're going back to the Clinton administration, there is about $1,500 per student per semester uh, allocated for um, well-being, overall happiness, and merriment. And those funds are put into basically a slush fund. And all you have to do is create a student organization. So you'd have to get a, uh, a, a full-time uh, faculty member, and then you get you know, a certain amount of members in your group, and then you can petition to get your piece of that money. And I was like, this can't be serious. <laughs> I said, oh yeah. So I went and found what George W. Bush would refer to as a coalition of the willing. <laughs> and we we put ourselves together and we did some amazing things. We we had uh we would throw parties, we would um do shopping trips on the university's dime in luxury tour buses. Um, we went and bought, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 15000 or $20,000 worth of Movado watches from a shopping outlet. Like, we had a ball, you know. Um, we did a game show in the dorms where we bought PlayStations and all those types of things. So it, it, it showed me that the thing that people don't spend enough time doing is finding out what's right in front of them. Um, the second big thing I did when I was on campus um, was I was a broadcasting major, obviously. I mean, because I was already doing radio. Why not just go ahead and just skate my way through college since I didn't want to be there in the first place? <laughs> and I was working at the, at the student radio station, and they decided they were going to remove the students and then flip the format from jazz to classical, as if young people couldn't play Mozart, Bach, Beethoven, and Brahms. Fine. So um, for the next two weeks, I camped out at the president of the university's office. Um, his name was Peter Lee, of course. And they said, well, why, why are you here every day? I said, because I pay all of this money for tuition and I can't do the thing that I'm supposed to be getting a degree in. And I'm not going to be one of these people saying the six deadly words. And the secretary said, what are the six deadly words? I said, do you want fries with that? <laughs> And I got a meeting with him and he gave me a room in the student center and I created what's now known as WIP Radio on the campus of Temple University. Some 23 years later, thousands of students and professional broadcasters get to practice and uh, hone their skills, you know, at the radio station. And then I started throwing parties um, and I was renting out the YMCA. I was renting out um, certain student facilities and I was packing those parties better than the Divine Nine combined. Um, I would hire um, popular bands from different areas. Like I was taking advantage of OPM, which for young people, in case you don't know what that means, that means other people's money. So I was using the, 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 the money that the university had for our student organizations to petition for, for you know recreation and merriment. And I was doing a whole lot of recreation and merriment. Uh, aside from that, I, I cut hair, so I wound up cutting the entire Temple University basketball team. Um, you know, black and white. I'm the son of a hairstylist, so that wasn't the, out of my RA dorm room. Notice I'm not really spending any money yet. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, you know, those were the things I, I was doing. I was I was doing everything I possibly could to make college my own personal playground. You know, I, I wanted to be as close to Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell as you possibly could get. You know, so that was the goal for me. I didn't want to work hard. I didn't want to be bored. I didn't want to take a bunch of hokey doke classes that weren't going to do me any good. I got an education outside of the lecture hall by taking that situation that I didn't want to be in and turning it into my own personal paradise. I love it. Like even if that when that in that brief story, you I think you shared about four different ways or strategies or businesses that students can start. Um, either their own business. You said the barbershop. Um, you said mm -hmm. you did parties. So that's like a popular mm -hmm. way that students, I know everyone knows if you're, I guess, our age, you know, Puffy got his start at Howard, like throwing parties, um, you know, and that you look what that turned into him right. using a student organization to, you know, build, you know, build friendships, build relationships, entertain. That's another thing that you can do. Um, mm -hmm. 
And I, I wrote down all the stuff that you, because I, I, like I said, when you talk, I usually take notes because it's always entertaining and informative. I uh, like the six, de six deadly words. I love that because mm -hmm. oftentimes yeah. students spend their time in college doing those jobs that you don't necessarily need a college degree for. So you should spend mm -hmm. your time in college getting those skills, um, building those networks and building those relationships that, you know, will build upon your degree. And I like the coalition of the willing as well. So that's also important, building those relationships and building that network. Mm -hmm. So thank you for all of that. Like I said, get your note pens, get your pens out and get your notebooks out. All right, let me move on to my next question. Um, so um, you just went over up actually my next question. So let me move on to the next one. Um, what types of businesses or side hustles uh, for students who want to start a business in college um, do you think, you know, in this day and age, um, actually some, mo most of the stuff you mentioned is just, is relevant even now, but what are, what are your advice when people come to you, young people, maybe college students come to you about what are some, you know, considering COVID, considering all that's going on, what are some ideas mm -hmm. or ways that students can start businesses? Right. I'm all about, and I've, listen, I have been self-quarantined for the past 25 years. I, I'm a homebody by nature. The only time I'm out is if it's for marketing purposes or a check or I'm doing something with my family. Other than that, I am home. Like, this is my office. I don't have a son. This is all my stuff. I like comic books. I need things that distract me. Um, what I would highly recommend is there's so much. The Bible says what's in your hand. And there's so many times that a lot of kids, I got a 21-year-old college student, right? Mm -hmm. You know, she'll go through, you know, just like any other kid, shoes, clothes, she doesn't even, you know, want to wear anymore, that type of stuff. eBay is your friend. Start flipping. Like, get the flipping. That's one. Two, um, you could start a business with doing tutorials. You could start a business um, with... Um, taking really good Instagram pictures. A lot of people have horrible selfies, especially on campus. They don't know how to get the angles right. They don't know how to, you know, make things um, flattering for them. Oh, I did have another really good business that I forgot that I really didn't mention. And now this one is not exactly the most ethical. <laughs> However, um, when I look at, uh, hold on, let me see if I actually have cash on me. This, this is a rarity I actually have cash on me. So I got a $20 bill. And I'm looking on the $20 bill, right? And mm -hmm. it says, well, you probably can't make that even, even with a 4K camera. It says, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. What that means is I collected a whole lot of these uh, Andrew Jacksons for ghostwriting papers for people. Oh, my God. <laughs> I do not <laughs> advocate. Uh, again. <laughs> I am not the type of person to tell you to do anything illegal. However, I look at a situation for what it actually is. You know, I, only have about, I love the fact that you called it ghost writing. <laughs> the university exactly would call it, it would call it plagiarizing if you do it. Let me put that disclaimer out there for people who yeah, the university would call it plagiarizing. The it. I, I, but the thing of it is, right? It's a different type of situation, you know. Um, when you have people who make whole careers in the real world with ghost writers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Oprah You're Winfrey, right. Whoopi Goldberg, Steven Spielberg, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, I could do this all day. So for me, it's a situation where if you have a skill or if you want to tutor someone privately, there's no university rule against tutoring someone. True, true, true. There's no university rule against editing a paper. True. For someone that True. is allowed. True. So you can offer professional editing services and you could do a good, better, best model. One is just a quick overview for just spelling and grammar. The other one is helping with um, sentence and syntax. And the third one is what we call the golden parachute, where we do everything in good <laughs> and better. And then we make sure that it's the best possible version of the paper that you wrote. <laughs> and I'm not going to, you know, my head is not in the sand. I know that like, even on Instagram, like there is blatant advertisements for people doing that ghostwriting service that you are referring to. But uh, just a little warning for students, if you get caught, it is usually in most universities grounds for, you know, dismissal. Yeah. FYI. So let, let, let me let just run this down for a second. If you're stupid enough <laughs> to get, you know, 
Winky the beatnik who gets high but writes a brilliant English lit paper to do it, you get what you get. My daddy, God rest his soul, would say, loose lips sink ships. And my whole thing is, is it more important to do something that you don't want to do or is it more important to go ahead and make the money and get out of the experience which you need to get out of it? You know, and my, my game, and I'm gonna tell you, my game was so tight, and I'm again not advocating this, but I'm giving you <laughs> options. What you choose to do with that information is completely at your own risk. Do not hold the college success professor or Dave <laughs> Anderson liable for what you choose to do because you're an adult now. That's the other thing about being in college, you're an adult. Um, I was so good at it that I could tell you. Like, hey, do you want a C paper, a B paper, or an A plus paper? Because if you go from D's to A's, A partner, they're going whoop, whoop, red flag. But if you go from a D to a B, it looks like you just buckled down. And if you go from a B to a stronger B, it looks like they're really putting in work. A couple more B's and then towards the final. But, you know, you, you can't take my degrees back because <laughs> I did my work. And then so. <laughs> and some other people, so maybe you have more than one degree, actually. Uh, I, got at least, uh, I got about five of my own, and I know that there's at least 35 others that, you know, got thanks, Dave, and small print written somewhere. All right, let's move on to another topic. <laughs> So you mentioned that you um, your first job was a, as a broadcaster, and I know you have a um, long and diverse background in podcasting, and we're talking on a podcast right now. Podcasts are really hot. I often tell students that one of the ways that they can start building their brand um, and, you know, building... Um, their expertise is to start a podcast. Um, mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts um, for young people in regard to podcasting, being a podcaster, starting a podcast, listening to podcasts, any of that? You know, well, I mean, since I created the format, first and foremost, you're welcome. Secondly, um, I think that in a day and age where people are starting to realize that you don't need the machine anymore, you know, when you can do it all on your own and it's not just some one off guy like a Master P or, you know, um, some other, you know, entrepreneur type of person, you, when you can just do it yourself and not have to worry about um, anybody else, you know, you're good to go. So to me, it's an exciting time. So I would tell you honestly, Talk about the things that make you happy. Mm -hmm. Talk about the things that you enjoy. Talk about the things that you're really good at. There are literally people making tens of thousands of dollars a month, breaking down shows that they did not write, produce, direct, or star in. There are podcasts about that. You know, you can make a podcast about any single thing that you want. You can make a podcast just about your sex life if that's what you chose to. And again, I'm not advocating anything, but make sure that you're protected. Um, that to sure. me is um, an important situation. You know, yeah, there are definitely I, I a lot of there are definitely a lot of um, businesses for you know people who are relationship experts. Um, so that is also a possibility for, you know, if you don't know how to, you know, talk to girls, you don't know how to communicate, you know, you're, you have, um, confidence issues. So there, I've definitely seen a lot of businesses, um, and topics on that, on that, not necessarily sex, but building relationships, communicating, um, building your confidence, because a lot of the times the social aspect of college is, um, where sometimes students struggle, you know, they're good with the academics, they're good with their grades, but the actual building relationships, um, getting out, getting out of their comfort zone and doing things that are, you know, they may not have been exposed to, you know, back at home, they're off at college, um, they're a little bit reserved. So it's all about building those soft skills as well while you're in college. Yeah, it's, it's extremely important. And I think that we don't spend enough time talking about um, soft skills in a practical sense. We also spend too much time in the factory part of college, which is the one thing that I have, against, well, there's two things I have against traditional college educations. Um, but the, the, these, the, this, this factory mentality of go to school to get a job, get a job to pay off school, is not what you should do it for. You mm -hmm. go to school 
to enhance your skills. You take those skills and you build your future because you're going to be competing with a whole bunch of people, right? Um, Phoenix, I'm imagining that you're somewhere around my age, right? Yeah. So yeah. when I grew up um, and I was a young man, um, late teens, early 20s, there was this game called Mortal Kombat. Mm-hmm. Um, the movie is really fascinating because in the movie, there are all these people fighting to save their world. But most importantly, they're fighting to be the champion. So those people are fighting amongst themselves. And you know what the champion was doing? The champion was a four-armed monster named Goro. Four arms. He was sitting back watching the other people fight while scantily clad bikini-wearing women were peeling and feeding him grapes. Four arms. He didn't lift a finger. You want to know why? Because champions don't lift a finger. Champions let contenders beat themselves up so that when it's time for the champion to fight, well, he's well rested and fully hydrated from those grapes that have been peeled. Be a champion. Don't be a contender. I love your analogies. They're always so dynamic. I love them. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't credit me. Give it to Jesus. Jesus spoke in parables and analogies, and I figured if it worked for him, it should work for me. <laughs> Great. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. I had some notes from when I was listening to you before. I, I don't have them um, right here with me, but it was also some good advice for um, young people. So for young people, um, if you do not already, we'll have some time to plug you at the end. If you do not already, definitely follow um, Dave Anderson, the business bully. Whether you're interested in entrepreneurship or not, he has some definite, you know, as you can see, he's very entertaining. Um, and he has some definite knowledge um, to share with you all. All right. So I, when I saw you um, speak um, last year, um, I did ask you that very question because um, you just referenced the fact that you're not necessarily a proponent of college. Um, so, you know, I, you know, with my business, I w wanted to know, cause you'd mentioned that you had a daughter um, who's going into her senior year, correct? Correct. And I asked you, you know, cause most entrepreneurs or not, not most, a lot of entrepreneurs because they have gone through the entrepreneur route don't necessarily see the value or impact um, of college. So I had asked you that question then um, and you told me about, you know, you know, why your daughter is in college or how you, what you felt about your daughter being um, a college student. So I wanted to ask you some questions as a parent of a college student. Um, mm -hmm. But could you answer that question um, initially? You know, how did you feel or what was your influence on your daughter going to college? Well, my thing was this. I'm not pro. I'm not I'm not anti college, but I'm more anti than I am pro. And I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Especially keep, I'm, I'm a black man. I've been black for well over 42 years now. And I don't think I'm going to change. Um, but what I do know is that we have been hopped up from around 1981 to now on this go to college for a promise of a better life. And then when you look at the uh, statistics, according to the 2010 census, if you know anything about American civics, you know the census is only taken every 10 years. If mm -hmm. there are 300,000 registered census, um, you know, verified people who have master's in business administration, better known as an MBA, and they all list bartending as their vocation, there's something wrong with the education system. Mm -hmm. If in fact, most of the stuff that people learn in this country is absolutely irrelevant. And that goes from kindergarten all the way through college graduate school. College was great when there was no internet. College was great um, when you only had to rely on encyclopedias and newspapers, which were slow at best, our news cycle switches every six hours. It used to be a 48-hour news cycle. Now it's now it's a six. So we have all of the information we could ever possibly want in the world on this little thing right here. So unless you're going to be a doctor, lawyer, architect, engineer, that type of thing, I'm not really here for college because I think it's one of the greatest um, hustles run on black people simply because when you look at how many of us cannot afford mm -hmm. to go to college without some type of student loan that cripples us from the time that we're 18 years old until we're 60. Those mm -hmm. are stats. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. If we did not have student loan debt, like the albatross around our neck that it is, our mm -hmm. debt to income ratio would shoot up, which means that we would be able to get better jobs because most jobs are using credit as a criterion 
for whether or not they hire you. We would be able to afford better housing, which also plays into when we marry and have children, what type of school district they're in. So there are all of these other factors that go into having a college experience. And then as a business person, and I've been, keep in mind, I left for college. You know, a lot of people, not all, but a lot in my professional experience and in my travels around these 50 yet to be United States, there's a lot of people teaching really outdated information that isn't practical at all. You have Howard University students who are majoring in business, dressed to the nines every single day. That's funny because I bought a company in India yesterday morning with a t-shirt and a pair of sweats on in a Spider-Man and Iron Man um, office and didn't bat an eye. And no mm -hmm. one said anything other than, thank you, Mr. Anderson, we're so happy we got this deal done. Nobody cares about what you do, what, what you dress. They care about your value. You're putting too much stock on things that don't matter. And so it comes back to those types of things that bother. So what I told my daughter was, this is something you say that you wanna do, this is your dream. When I had a dream of just, you know, taking the record deal that I had, and not going to school, yeah, my mom went about that life. So my wife and I were like, listen, if this is what you want to do, if this is the thing that makes you happy, it's your life, we'll make it happen. You know, I don't think that it's necessary. But if you don't have a plan, mm -hmm. and if you're not ready to commit to what you want to do for sure, mm -hmm. college is a great place to find out who you are. And also, when you go to an HBCU, you get a master's degree in blackness from all circles, <laughs> from high end bougie to low end gutter. So that's always <laughs> the important thing. But I can listen, I can get high end bougie to low end gutter without having to pay $18,972.63 a, a semester. Is that how much it is to go to Howard? <laughs> yeah, when I pay for it out of state, yes, absolutely. Then you factor in um, food, you factor in travel, gas, taxes. Um, clothing, necessities, you know, jumbo tubs of mace, stun gun. Wait, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Stick I'm nodding. I was nodding throughout all of this. You were saying, yes, I work in higher ed, but I completely agree with everything that you said. And one of the things when I do talk to people about going to college is that oftentimes, like everyone wants to go to Howard. Like I wanted to go to Howard. I went to Morgan. But every People are paying for the pedigree, the name, the social part, and not necessarily. Some people, luckily, you're able to afford to send your daughter to that school. But too often in our community, we're going into debt to help our children, you know, pursue that dream that they have. And when I'm talking to people um, about, you know, what the decisions are with regard to what college they should go to, I think or my expert opinion is that you need to pick a college that you can afford. And afford means, you know, you may have a small amount of loans, but too often we're getting loans, our children are getting loans, and then there's still extra money that we still can't afford to pay because usually it doesn't cover everything. They're like those extra expenses that you're talking about, or even extra mm -hmm. tuition that you're talking about, because we have this idea of we want to go to Howard or we want to go to, uh, you know, our dream school. We want to go to NYU. We want to go to these name brand institutions. So I completely agree with what you're saying. It's not always, um, I had, I was having a conversation with someone um, uh, about, you know, going to community college for a couple of years because it's cheaper. But um, she was concerned that her daughter didn't, she thought that, you know, the community college was beneath her or not, you know, not, she wouldn't, you know, show her expertise or her um, skill. So too often we're thinking about the name brand and not what the plan is or what our ultimate goals are with regard to going to college. So thank you for talking, talking about that. So no, no, um, thank you for allowing me to. Oh, no problem. So your your daughter is going into her senior year at Howard, um, correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. And is she going off? So I'm getting into your thoughts and feelings about um, what's going to be going on on campus, having a daughter. I know a lot of parents have concerns. What are your thoughts and feelings about, is she going off to campus? Is she staying at home? Um, what is your family's plan for this fall semester? I know it's a senior year, so I'm sure she's you know wanting to have that last semester on campus. So what's going on in your household in that discussion? Well, she has she has off campus housing. She's in an apartment about twenty minutes from campus. They've got shuttles and all that good stuff. So she's uh, she's good to go. She's safe. Um, I'm going to tell you, and this is the other thing that nobody likes to talk about. If I can be so frank and earnest on a show, 
Definitely. Um, her freshman year, you know, um, and, and I'm happy that she went to Howard because her going to Howard forced me to be a different type of animal in order to come up with that tuition, in order to raise my prices, in order to um, bring up my level of service to my clients. So all those things would not have happened in my business. I would not be as successful from a financial and results standpoint if it wasn't for my daughter making this decision. But when she got to her dorm, um, the first thing that we noticed was that the closet door didn't exist. It wasn't there and nobody came to change it. And so that happened the first semester and the second semester, the same thing. And then it was ironic because the Howard University choir got brand new robes and decided to sing in the street about how they came in 89th place on the top 100 schools according to US News and World Report. And I mean, they were singing like they actually did something. Last I checked, the 89th place Olympian doesn't go to the Olympics, let alone celebrate. And if you're in 89th place out of 100, what does that say about the other HBCUs? And then what does it say about your priorities that you think that you've made it at 89th place? So the best black school, Black Harvard, is 89th place and we're singing in the streets, but my kid doesn't have a, a, a closet door so that she can change privately? That is a little bit problematic, especially then when you factor in the fact that the president is walking around like Billy D. Williams in a Colt 45 commercial coming in about our surgeries and being driven everywhere because, well, he didn't have a good college experience. And so now he's going to front like he's actually done something with his life. But I digress. Um, I, I think that the priorities are never about the students, because let's be honest, and you know I'm telling the truth, the buildings are paid for. OK, um, the sports teams are usually covered by Gatorade, Pepsi, Coke, uh, Reebok, Nike, whomever. So all that stuff is already taken care of. The food contract is usually done by some type of food service company. So that's so Marriott or something like that. So all of those things are automatically covered by contracts, most of which come from the state. So then what are we paying for? Oh, well, let's not even talk about the books. Because you'll change three words and then all of a sudden, because the professor's in the bed with the publisher and the publisher's in bed with the bookstore and the bookstore's in bed with the university because it sits right there as a part of the university, but not really. Um, everybody's making money off the blood, sweat, and tears of American parents who hope to give their kids a better life. But no one's talking about the fact that this is a fix. And none of this is criminal. But yet you will roast a child and throw out a child and ostracize a child because he paid somebody like me to write his paper. I agree. I agree. I'm just I'm 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 just here to you know to to to, to paint the whole picture. But again, I had a great time in college. I ain't gonna lie to you. One for college, I wouldn't I wouldn't have met my wife. I wouldn't have my kids. Like. You know, right. I met my best friend in college. Like, yeah, I but love. that's not necessarily something that, you know, if you can't afford the tuition, that is something, you know, the social experience. Like, I also had a great time at Morgan State University. Um, luckily, it was not expensive when I went. Well, it was expensive. I didn't have to pay for it. My mom had a payment plan. But the point is that, you know, exactly. I did not have loans when I graduated undergrad. The, that is the goal. Um, so that is something that I don't think is heard of. You know, there are definitely, I've had people on the show who work with students to get like full right scholarships so they, they graduate debt free. Hopefully there's an entrepreneur who um, pays the full class like the um, guy did at Morehouse, plays the full class um, uh, loans when you graduate, but that's not likely. So too often students are putting themselves into so much debt. And like you mentioned, the student loan debt is not something that's ever going to go away. The only time they release uh, release your student loan debt is if you die. So that's not something. And it's definitely, like you said earlier, um, will decrease your net worth. If it's something that you, you know, people are have college credit and it's college loans, but no degree. So this is something that we need to do more uh, thoughtful consideration and thoughtful thought about. So I'm glad you're talking about it. You know, I can't, you know, I can't say that you're not telling the truth about um, many of the things that you said. So I can't argue with you about that, nor do I want to. Um, no, and I don't want to argue either. And I don't want to seem like, um, like however you get to the top of the mountain is how you get to the top of the mountain. But I feel like we need to have an honest conversation about what it really looks like mm -hmm. and who's really benefiting 
from all of these things because we don't you know, we don't ever come from that place. It's just pop and circumstance and make your make your family proud and so on and so forth. Like no, find out who you are, find out what makes you happy, and then find a way to monetize it. If that does require you going to school, by all means do. If it doesn't, ask yourself why in this country that's supposed to be so far advanced, why it's so much easier for you to get a student loan than if you get a business loan. So you can get a, a student loan at 17. I was 17. I was a minor. And all my mom had to do was write a signature and they had no problem giving me tens of thousands of dollars to go get a degree. Mm hmm. But if I really wanted to start a business at 17 and a half, nope. Same bank. Sure. Same kid. Same co-signer. Different result. Ask yourself why. We'll just leave it like that. Ask yourself why that is. And think about it, what you're spending your money on for your education. And one of the reasons why I'm in business, why I started my business is that the reason or not the reason to help students get the value that they're spending all of those thousands and thousands of dollars with. Because too often students graduate and then they're like, OK, now what? You spent four years in college. You shouldn't graduate and think you should have a plan for what you're going to be doing after you spent those thousands and thousands of dollars, but too often that's not the focus of why we're in college. You know, you may be focused on getting a GPA, but a good GPA is not necessarily going to get you a job. You need to be building, like you said, those skills, those networks, and getting that um, that expertise in something tangible, something practical, so something that someone's going to hire you for. So that was one of my questions. Um, when you are looking for people as an entrepreneur to employ in your business, what are some of the skills? What are some of the um, personality types? What are some of the things that you're looking for in the people that you are looking to hire who are college graduates or who not are not college graduates? Uh, first thing, and I want to be very, very blunt about this, I'm looking for the best qualified Black applicants I can find. Sorry, I'm a black owned and operated business that caters to black people, um, particularly black women. So I look um, for those people who look like me because there's a certain cultural frame of reference when you do business in this country. Um, and so that's that's number one. The second thing I look for is I look for people when I ask them questions that I know are impossible for them to answer, for them to do one thing. And if they hit me with, I don't know, it's over with. I don't want to hear. I don't know. I can get. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I can get that from my five year old. I don't need. I don't know. I need. Let me figure out how I can make that happen. Give me 24 hours. Give me 48 hours. I will find a way because I had to figure it out. I had to find a way like your ability to solve problems, your ability to think on your feet, your ability to be creative because I'm Okay, there's two. Let me go back for a second because I, I want to answer your question as thoroughly as I possibly can. So forgive me, verbosity, but this is important. Mm -hmm. There's two um, types of individuals, right? When it comes to entrepreneurship, there are business owners and then there are CEOs. Now, the business owner loves the business, owns the business, but spends most of his or her time working in the business. Mm -hmm. The CEO loves the business, owns the business, runs the business, and spends most of his or her time allowing the right people to operate the things that are not necessarily um, particularly needed for them to do. In other words, they don't, the, mm -hmm. the core competencies are what they focus on. I'm a business coach. I'm a creative. That is my job, right? I have somebody for strategy. I got somebody else to do graphic design. Even though obviously I'm a heck of a strategist, I'm really good at graphic design. I can I, I can build a website in under 20 minutes. I have a lot of skills. I read 104 books a year. As Muhammad Ali said at a very, very young time in his life, I'm a bad man. However, I'm also a big guy and I'm drinking a lot of fat-free water, Phoenix, which means that I don't want to die of a heart attack from stress and I'm trying to get my body together, but I can't do that if I'm wearing so many hats because mm -hmm. then you're replacing the job where you work for the man 
to the job where you work yourself to death in order to not work for the man. Mm -hmm. So systems are extremely important. So I need people who can think on their feet, who can provide something. And I need people who can teach me things. I consider myself a relatively intelligent man, but if I know everything that you know, then you're of no use to me. Right. Teach me something, show me something. Give me something that is going to uh, allow me to say, wow, that's cool. I wouldn't have thought of that. Um, I hired I hired an assistant, and it's the first time I've ever had a male assistant. And when I tell you this kid is phenomenal, he's in his twenties. He's getting ready to buy his own uh, set of laundry mats. I mean, but he is phenomenal. If I got a problem, he figures it out. If there's an issue, he handles it. He's like, and I mean, I will literally be like, it's me. I need one, two, three, four, seventeen things done, and that's at like 7 a.m. By noon, he's like, hey, is there anything else I can do for you? I was like, wait, I just gave you seven. I want people who can solve the problems independent of me. Mm -hmm. Because if you have to keep coming to me, then one, you're not taking the opportunity to empower yourself. And two, you're taking away the entire point of you being here, which is you figuring it out. So resilience, can-do attitude, Problem solving, never say I don't know, figure it out, resourcefulness, resilience, all of those things are important to me. I don't care about a degree. I care about if you can do the job. I care about if you make my life easier. I care about if you give me a couple extra hours to spend with my family. I care about if I'm able to go and do a tour, you know, to promote my new book um, or to go on a speaking engagement at this college or that college and have a conversation about what entrepreneurship looks like, whereas though I don't have to keep coming back to my phone like, oh my God, people are burning. Your job is to relieve stress. Your job is to take, um, take pain away. If you can't do that effectively, I don't need you. So those are the things that I look for. Excellent. So to follow up along um, with that uh, line of questioning, so there are some different schools of thought about whether or not you can learn to be an entrepreneur in college. Definitely, there are colleges that teach entrepreneurship. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. <laughs> I need you to understand who I am. I need you to understand that my grandmother, Edith Lewis, was a teacher. You should also understand that her oldest child, James Lewis Jr., was a teacher so much so that he had a doctorate. He um, taught and went to MIT. He was also on the team that invented what you now know as the Jumbotron. Brilliant, brilliant man. Um, my mother is an educator. My stepfather was an educator. I love teachers. If you're not an entrepreneur currently, you have absolutely no business talking about entrepreneurship. Period. If you don't have a business that is grossing more than what your what what your colleagues are making as professors, you have no business talking about entrepreneurship because you don't know anything about entrepreneurship. You know about side hustles. So you could be able you be a great side hustle professor. Do that, but please stay 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 out of my sport. Don't come into my field and don't teach. Don't don't let don't lead these kids astray, telling them a bunch of nonsense that doesn't work or play it safe or, or all this stuff. Listen. Do you know everybody who plays it safe loses? I don't play the game to um, be safe. A lot of people play the game not to lose. I play to win at all costs. And when you're a business owner, this is the things that they don't teach you. This is why if we're going to use school, let's use school the way I did. Um, take an accounting class so that you can understand where the money goes. So that when you're talking to your accountant, you can come with a certain frame of reference. If you take a loss in your business, this beautiful company we call the United States of America, and I said company, not country, that wasn't a Freudian slip. This company called the United States of America wants to reward the job creators for taking the risk. So you can write that off. Now, if you go lose, you know, $15,000 gambling, you can't write that off. If I lose $15,000 on a bad investment, I can write that off. That's the beauty of being a job creator. That is the beauty of being an entrepreneur. I, I think a lot of these entrepreneur curricula are completely outdated. They're archaic. They're a dog that won't hunt. They're Jurassic Park without the frog DNA to make up the difference. They're lacking. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not, 
not I'm not being funny. I'm, I'm I know, yes, you are. You are so. <laughs> All right. Yes, I like the Jurassic Park reference. I just watched it this week, and it's been on. Uh, See, on the... look at that. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Because they bridge yes, the gap with Frog DNA. Yes, yes. That's what you I was see how well that worked out? Yes. <laughs> Your analogies, like I said, they're fantastic. Anyway, yes. um, so for a student who is going to school, um, they want to major in business, but they also are thinking of also being an entrepreneur. Since you're saying that that's not necessarily entrepreneurship classes are not necessarily, unless it's taught by someone who's actually an entrepreneur, um, or maybe there is a guest lecture with someone like you who's actually an entrepreneur. What are some things that they can do to actually learn um, how and what to do when they graduate if they want to start their own business? This this is my phone, that, that beautiful piece mine. On this phone, right, I can open it up with my face and I can go and I can find um, entrepreneurs on, on Instagram and I can DM them and see about doing a virtual internship. I can ask questions. I can find people that I like. I can pick up, um, I, I can take the same phone and uh, what city are you in? Philadelphia. You're in Philadelphia like I am. So you can go to the Philadelphia Inquirer or the Tribune or something. You can look and see, you know, in the business section, who's doing what. You can find those businesses. You can start asking to speak to the owner. Hey, can I come in shadow? I'd like to volunteer. I'm trying to learn some things that I'm not getting in college. And so I want some real brass tacks um, experience, not only from a resume standpoint, but from a, a resilience building standpoint, I think that we don't spend enough time doing that. We've lost a lot. We've lost the art of writing a letter. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a proud Temple graduate. I think Temple is one of the greatest schools that has ever existed because Temple allowed me to ride roughshod all over their roles and allow me to do things that would help the people that um, I was going to classes with every single day. Um, I think that you need to start being creative as to how you get your information. And like anything else, including and up to what I'm telling you, take it with a grain of salt and do what my wife refers to as your own research. That's it. You know, I, I get people um, every once in a while, not as often as I wish, who say, listen, I'm a college student. I would really like to learn from you. Do um, you have any virtual internships? Is there anything I can help with? Can you give me some advice? Those are the things that I live for. I love that type of stuff. The Bible also says you have not because you ask not. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to start asking. But if you just left it to, you know, what you learned in college, that's like Mike Tyson, who, who by the way, isn't exactly what I would consider a Rhodes Scholar, has one of my all-time favorite quotes. Everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> oh, I was an entrepreneurship major. I majored in entrepreneurship. Yeah. How much revenue did you bring in, entrepreneurship major? That's all I want to know. How much revenue did you bring in? And then the other thing that I want you to do is trust who you are. Phoenix, give me one minute on this. I promise you. Just stay you with me. You can have more than a minute. Trust who you are. Trust that the things that you like and that you, your peers like are important. And then look at the problems that you have. List the things. Like everybody tells you to accentuate the positive and eliminate the negative. No, I need you to write down all of the negative things, all of the things that you don't like, all the things that you want to change. And then what I want you to do is I want you to spend every single, every other single free moment, because you got to have some recreation. I love recreation. But every other single free moment, I need you to start figuring out how you can be the solution. The reason that I was able to amass what I've amassed and build the type of business that I've, uh, I've built and help other people build their businesses is because I'm good at a couple of things. One, I know how to solve problems. The second thing is I know how to be somebody's answered prayer. That's it. Because if you're taking, listen, if you... Um, are in the desert and I got an ice cold bottle of water. Even if you're not a water drinker, I'm your hero. I'm your own personal Buddha, Jesus, whomever, you know, because I'm solving your problem. That's what it is. If you get to run in your stocking and I got some clear nail polish in the ladies room, not that I would be in the ladies room, but let's go with the analogy. And I go like that and it stops to run. I'm your hero. I solved your problem. 
trust who you are. Trust that the problems that you have, your peers have too, because y'all all got the same problems. It, it, it don't vary that much. So be the person that comes up with the solution as opposed to being the person who's just like everybody else. And I know and I apologize wholeheartedly because my generation dropped the ball as parents and we allowed you to think that it is okay to be like everybody else and it's okay to fit in. No, it's not. Fitting in is the worst thing you could ever possibly be. The worst thing that you could be other than fitting in is being cool. You know what cool people get? Memories. You think I'm lying? Go watch Married with Children. Al Bundy, the protagonist <laughs> of that show, scored four touchdowns at Polk High in a single game, and he sells shoes. Do you know how many people I went to high school with who, who were hot and cool and this, that, and the third? You know you know what they all say to me? Man, I knew you was going to make it. Okay, cool. I'm glad you did. But I, I'm bad because it's like, if you peaked in high school, mm-hmm. if you peaked in college, mm-hmm. But do you have any idea how much more time you got on the clock? Don't fit in. Stand out. Be who you are. Not who the TV tells you should be. Not who the Kardashians say you should be. Not who Kanye says you should be. Not who Instagram tells you to be. Be who you are. And take enough stock in that to find out the problems that you can solve readily and easily. And then once you're able to solve those problems, tax them. That's how you gain experience as an entrepreneurship major. Love it. So one more question, and then I will um, ask you to talk about all the wonderful things that you are doing and how people can connect with you and work with you if they're interested. Um, So you did mention just now Instagram, and I know you have um, some strategies as to how people can use social media uh, for helping them with regard to entrepreneurship or all the other things that we were talking about today. So do you have any um, quick tips or advice uh, with regard to students and how uh, we were talking about earlier building a brand and things like that, things that they can be doing, should be doing uh, with regard to social media um, as potential entrepreneurs? Um, Here's the thing that I will say. Um, First, um, there's a great book by Stephanie Humphrey that says, "Don't." it's called Don't Let Your Digital Footprint Kick You in the Butt. It just came out. It's featured on Good Morning America. I strongly suggest that you get it because, and, and, and keep in mind, I've got some really, really crazy stuff on my social media, but I can afford to because I work for me and I don't plan on firing me anytime soon. Um, but if you're out here and you're worried about other people's opinions and things that nature, if you're trying to build a brand on social media, be bold. Be consistent, go live, offer so much value that people will want to pay you for whatever it is, and then get them so hype on a product. I come from the hood. You know, in the hood, they'll give you a sample of weed or whatever the particular um, thing of choice is. And once you like that sample and you come back for more, that's when they tax you. When you go to the mall, when we would used to be able to go to the mall, they have that Israeli soap and the and the and the cream, and they put it on you, and then buddy, 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 and then you're like, oh, this is really nice. This is fully aged, da 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 da. Twenty five dollars for the set. They tax you. Do the same thing. Success and failure both leave clues. Also, I will tell you, you need to read, and I mean, read like it makes no sense, and Read the things you want to read and then read the things that you don't want to read. But if we're talking about social, so I'm going to give you some books to read. Um, Purple Cow by Seth Godin. Uh, Paulo Coelho's The Alchemist. All right? Um, pitch, Close, Up, Sell, Repeat by me. Say that again. Um, pitch, Close, Up, Sell, Repeat. It's by Dave Anderson. It's available right now at businessbullyshow.com. You can get all my books there. Um I will also say that there is um, there is a bunch of really great information out there if you're paying attention. The other thing that a lot of people don't spend time doing, do you mind if I, if I just really quickly uh, share my screen? I want to do a quick experiment with you while we have some time. Sure. That's okay. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. And um, I want you to give me, Phoenix, um, an interest that you hear young people having. Before you share or what when you share? Uh b- before I share. Okay. Uh you being a YouTuber, being an influencer, making money. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Got it. No problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to show you one of my weapons that I use in order to figure those things out. Do I need to add that? I think so. Okay. No, I'm just, I'm just going to show you. Like, you can just look and you can see that, okay, this, this person handles sponsorships, right? Let's, let's look up influencers. All right. And then we can go over to groups. Then we just scroll mm -hmm. and we find the things that we're looking for. And then we join. And then we rinse and repeat. A lot of times we don't take into account how much things can um happen for us if we put just a little bit of effort in you know also one more time i want to share my screen because this is really important right mm -hmm. um let me show you this so you can get another idea um podcasters i say i'm looking for black podcasters oh one two three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's all these groups. Some of them have 570 posts a day. That's a hot group. Mm -hmm. 600 posts a day. That's a hot group. You know, we start looking into other things that move C podcasts. That's a hot group, you know? So we mm -hmm. start looking and we start joining these groups and we start having these conversations and we start talking about what we want to do. And we interview people. We interview people on IGTV. You know, look at what Swiss Beats and Timberland did with Versus. Before they got to deal with Apple, they were just doing it on Instagram. Otto went to sponsors ahead of time and secured these things just based on the projected people that they were going to have. They will automatically do numbers, but that's a conversation for another day. The point of it is, if you want to be a successful influencer, you have to be consistent. You got to start talking to people and you have to start using OPA. Not to be confused with OPM, instead of other people's money, we're talking about other people's audiences. And then when you're being interviewed by these other podcasters or um, influencers or you know, notable individuals, whenever, if, well, you got nothing better to do. And if you're just curious, go look at my videos, go look at my breakfast club videos, go look at my videos at WGCI in Chicago, wherever you see me having an interview type of situation. And I guarantee you, you can pull about six or seven, if not 10, 10 moments that you could then take and make a little 60 second clip that somebody can then come and mean. That's what you need to do. The reason that I speak this way, the reason that I tell mm -hmm. stories and cover little quips, anecdotes, is because I'm memorable. I'm the guy you don't want to follow on a stage. I'm the guy you don't want to follow in an interview. I'm the guy that is going to make an impact because I don't care what comes out of my mouth. I care that what comes out of my mouth is strategically designed to get you interested in what I'm doing. I'm literally a peacock with feathers that has a bazooka behind all the feathers. And that's what you need to do. If you want to grow fast, use other people's audiences, OPA, and make memorable moments. Speak in sound bites. Be concise. And know what you're talking about. That's what I would strongly suggest. Love it. Thank you. Um, so I do want to, um, since you set that up so quick, so well, um, I do want to talk about um, who, I'm, who I'm going to have on next in the series. But before I do, um, you did mention your book, you mentioned your website, but any final things that you wanted to share with the audience regarding, um, because who, who's not going to want to follow you now <laughs> based oh, yeah, off of our mean, conversation? Look, there's some people who might not want to, and that's okay. I don't mind. <laughs> um, but I, I will say this. Um, you can go to businessbullyshow.com. And you can uh, check out all of my books. My, my brand new book, um, Sell It Like Jesus, will be out next week. And it's, the it's title. Oh, man. Let me listen. I might be able to give you a preview of the cover. You, you, want, a, you want a preview of the remix? Let me preview the remix. So let me see if I yes, can. Yes, uh, I would love it. Let me make sure I got that right. B U S I N E S S B U L L Y show.com, correct? 
Businessbullyshow.com. That's absolutely correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you, um, let me see here. Let me see if I can take this and, yep, got it. Hold on. Boom. I love technology. It's my favorite thing in the world. I can come here and I can just put this here and you'll be able to see the book. Hold on. Let me forward this. Why is it when I'm trying to do the cool stuff, it never lets me do the cool stuff? So I assume your book is about selling, um, selling products, oh, selling services, cool. selling yourself. Everything. The thing of it is, right, when you look at, here, I'll show you. I'll show you what the cover looks like um, while we're talking. When you look okay. at how, um, how the world is impacted by sales, nothing moves with, uh, without sales. You know, this is, uh, I don't know if you can see that. There it is. This is the, can you see that? Yes. That is the book cover. <laughs> I wonder what the, what the back is. <laughs> is that an actual I'm picture sorry, what Photoshop? On the back with you pointing at Jesus. Oh, no, that's me and Jesus. Jesus don't walk with you? <sighs> Jesus spoke to I don't me. have any photographic evidence, no. Listen, Jesus is with me <laughs> all the time. So the object of the game, right, is when we start to have a relationship when it comes to uh, to sales, it becomes a situation where we, um, we're looking at a situation where we start to feel sleazy and cheesy and, and, and all of those things are not what you want. Um, we want to uh, be as open and honest as possible. And I think that if you look at how Jesus operated, even in how he moved, if you are, and, and as a theologian, I wholeheartedly believe that Jesus walked on water, he'll call his children, um, took a couple of uh, fish and a couple of loaves of bread and fed 5,000 people. I believe all of those things. But the one thing that I think that people don't understand is that Jesus, who could do all those things, walk on water, heal palsy children, bring people back from the dead, take demons out of humans, put them into pigs and make them kill themselves. Jesus was still able to have sense enough to go out and get a team. So Jesus went out and he got um, two brothers who were fishermen, Peter and Andrew. Do you know why he got Peter and Andrew? No. Well, he got Peter and Andrew because... They were fishermen, which meant that they were well-traveled and that they could go to different ports of call and that they spoke different languages, understood um, the different customs of the area. You need people who know the lay of the land. The reason that my chief, uh, that my chief strategist is a black woman, the reason that uh, I have um, an admin who is Indian but lives in the UK is because I do business on five continents. I don't always know the customs. She speaks five languages. Mm -hmm. Peter went on after Jesus' ascension to become the first pope. On this rock, I will build my church. You also have to set people up for success. You get further with more people. It doesn't matter how spectacular the leader is. It matters how spectacular the team is. Jordan didn't win a whole bunch of championships without Pippen and Dennis Rodman, and damn sure didn't win any without Phil Jackson. You need teachers. You need coaches. You need a crew of people who will support you. All of those things are important. And then you have to deliver at a level that's better than most. And so I wrote Sell It Like Jesus. It's 234 pages of love and insight and um, great um, pop culture references because Jesus was the very first pop culture influencer that went viral. Now you can argue about Moses, but Moses didn't really go viral like that. You know, when you look at the the the, the contained situation, and it took Moses forty years to really get anything done, and the fact that even after he did all that, you know, he had to go and look at the promised land. He didn't get to go to the promised land. You feel me? So feel with Jesus. Wherever he went, there were people who had never seen Jesus. They just heard of him and was like, yo, I got I to gotta rock with this dude. There were people who were Jesus' sworn enemies like, yo, I need help. Because they knew his reputation preceded him. And every time he spoke, he made it count. When you're trying to sell yourself 
a product, a service, an idea, convince somebody to date you, whatever the case may be, you got to be above board. You got to know what you're talking about. And you got to be able to reference the right thing. And you got to make it entertaining. Jesus was a heck of an entertainer. You think I'm lying? What was his first miracle? Water the wine? Water and the wine at a wedding. He did it for his mom. Now, if you go back and you look at that passage, what you don't see is, or what you might not remember, is that they talked about the fact that the wine that Jesus made from that water was top shelf. And if you knew anything about uh, the Hebrew tradition when it came to wedding ceremonies, they lasted for weeks. The receptions lasted for weeks. And you would go top shelf and then down. That's where top shelf comes from. Mm -hmm. Right? So... He went above and beyond. Water in the wine by itself, even if it's water, the gas station box wine is miraculous. But water the top shelf, now you're showing off. You know what he's doing? He's creating a lasting impression. He's setting the bar and he's creating uh, a type of standard by which you should follow. And that's why I sell it like Jesus, which is available right now at businessbullyshow.com for pre-order. Is uh, a book that I feel you should read if you're trying to take your situation to the next level. But be warned, it's thorough. Get your highlighters ready. I, I got my highlighter ready. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's like, oh. Let's go. So there's that. And of course, I'm on all social media at The Business Bully, you know, except for Twitter, which is DA Business Bully. But I'm always answering DMs. I'm always open to answer questions. I'm always able to speak at your school or, you know, help you solve a problem. You know, that's what we're here for. But if you want to go to businessbullyshow.com, um, you certainly can. And there's one more thing, because I want to give your audience a gift, if that's okay. Definitely. All right. Because I know when I was a struggling college student, I didn't have much. Um, my last book sold hundreds of thousands of copies. It's called Pitch, Close, Up, Sell, Repeat. I told you it's a book I feel like you should read. It's a great start if you're just trying to start and getting in sales. Um, I'm going to give you a signed copy of that book absolutely free. I'm going to sign it. I'll personalize it to you the whole nine. Um all you need to do is go to thebusinessbully.com, T-H-E, businessbully.com. The only thing that I ask is that you cover shipping because shipping's expensive. I'll buy the book. I'll sign it. I'll, I'll lift the envelope. I'll send it to you. Just cover shipping. And shipping's only like seven bucks. So that's my gift to you, uh, a book that I know has changed so many people's lives and has continued to change people's lives. Um, pitch, close up, sell, repeat. You can get it right now at businessbully. Uh, dot com. Um, it's free plus shipping. And again, I'm honored that you let me run my mouth and ramble about things. And hopefully something intelligent was uh, gleaned from what I said. Uh, but yeah, thank you. Definitely. I definitely appreciate uh, all of your words of wisdom. And definitely, like I said, I, did, I was taking notes. I do have plenty of notes. So definitely a lot of it was um, worth a lot. Most of it was worth uh, writing down notes on. So thank you. Um, like I said, I am planning a whole entrepreneurship series, doing an entrepreneurship series. And since we were last talking about influencers, I am having an influencer on tomorrow, actually at 6 p.m. Um, she is a blogger and an influencer. So I know a lot of students are interested in becoming an influencer, um, you know, selling things on Instagram. She has a business called What's Hot, Hot, H-A-U-T-E. Um, so her name is Imani Haney. So definitely check me out tomorrow at 6 p.m. I am going live again with another guest talking about entrepreneurship. So again, we will share some useful information, some tools for you to be successful in college. So I will see you then. Again, thank you, Dave, for entertaining me as I knew you would, informing the guest as I knew you would. And um, I do plan on buying that book. So maybe I'll read it and then have you on again, um, talking about selling yourself um, from a college perspective. You know, when you graduate looking for jobs for those of us who are not going to go into entrepreneurship. So again, thank you. And hopefully I'll have you on again. I'd love to. Thank you so much, Phoenix. Thank you.